Okay, so you see this little slate colored object miraculously levitating over this magnet down here? That little fella is a material called LK99. And according to the pair of Korean scientists who posted this video, it might be one of the biggest scientific breakthroughs of our lifetime. LK99 was promised to be the holy grail of superconductors. It was the dawn of a new era for humanity. Maglev trains, affordable quantum computers, nuclear fusion, and flawless energy transmission were sure to follow this extraordinary breakthrough. Well, as exciting as this sounds, there's just one tiny little problem. Almost none of this is true. Only if what I tell you appears absolutely unbelievable have we any chance of visualizing the future as it really will happen. You ever wonder about superconductivity? A monumental breakthrough. LK99, a room temperature, ambient pressure, superconductor. Was a false dawn. The only thing we can be sure of about the future is that it will be absolutely fantastic. For weeks, LK99 took us all for a roller coaster ride on the social media hype machine. It became a live action and real time science fiction thriller. Well, after four weeks of ups, downs, hopes, fears, and fantasies, we finally know the answer. LK99 is not a revolutionary breakthrough in superconductors. And looking back, it's becoming increasingly clear that even if it was the real deal, it almost certainly would have had no measurable impact on our lives. So how did LK99 and the quest for the holy grail of superconductors become such a viral sensation? What's behind these increasingly frequent and accelerated hype cycles around emerging technologies? From nuclear fusion to quantum computers and even AI, which six months ago was poised to steal our jobs and kill us all, it seems like every few months we're inundated with revolutionary breakthroughs that promise to change everything. And yet nothing really seems to change all that much. After this LK99 episode, we might have to ask ourselves a very serious question. Are we living in a new age of techno hype? The future cannot be predicted. It will be invented. Well, the LK99 superconductor has been taking Elon Musk's newly named X by storm. An exciting challenge to the imagination and the vision of things to come when you are looking ahead in the city of tomorrow. Technology can point the way to a future of limitless promise. The LK99 saga began in late July when a team of scientists at a startup company in Seoul called Quantum Energy Research Center Incorporated posted the levitation video along with a pair of papers on Archive, which is a site for researchers to post preprints of papers that haven't yet been peer reviewed. The primary paper posted was titled The First Room Temperature Ambient Pressure Superconductor and it made a very extraordinary claim. This lab-constructed material they dubbed LK99, a pretty simple substance containing lead oxide, lead sulfate, and copper phosphide, and maybe a secret ingredient, is not only a superconductor, it's a superconductor at room temperatures and at normal air pressure. What does this mean exactly? Well, to understand superconductivity, let's start with plain old conductivity. Conductivity is essentially a measure of how well electricity flows through a given material. If it flows without too much resistance, we call it a conductor. Metals tend to be very good electrical conductors, like the copper and copper wire, for example. But conductivity is a spectrum, and copper doesn't perfectly transmit electrical charges. It offers some resistance, which means some of the electricity sent through the wire is lost along the way. At the most extreme end of the conductivity spectrum are so-called superconductors. And this strange quirk of quantum physics means that some materials are perfect lossless conductors of electricity. It's kind of crazy, to be honest. An electrical current can pass through these rare materials with literally zero resistance. But it takes a lot of pressure and typically a very, very cold environment. The first superconducting material was actually discovered more than a century ago in 1911. But to make it work, scientists had to cool the material to negative 452 degrees Fahrenheit. It was pretty damn cold. 
We have made some progress since then, and today we do have superconductors that operate at temperatures as warm as 95 degrees below zero. But again, we can only get them to work if we hold them at extremely high pressures, which takes a ton of energy, a lot of technology, and a lot of expense to achieve. There are thousands of known superconductors, but there are only four that we actually use because they're the ones that can be engineered, mass produced, and at a cost point that makes sense. So there are good reasons why a room temperature ambient pressure superconductor has been considered the holy grail of material science for over 60 years. A superconductor like this could potentially be vastly more practical for a much wider variety of applications. They could maximize the efficiency of our energy grids and supercharge fusion energy production. They could potentially speed up progress on quantum computers, which has stalled and maybe help usher in an era of super fast transport. Maybe. It's easy to see why the scientists behind LK99 closed their paper with this extraordinary statement. We believe that our new development will be a brand new historical event that opens a new era for humankind. But these kinds of grand claims should raise alarm bells. And not surprisingly, this is where the story of LK99 goes off the rails. Almost immediately after the original paper was presented on Archive, the story was picked up on Twitter, X, by a former physics PhD student, and the news spread like wildfire. For weeks on end, millions of people were following minute-by-minute -minute updates waiting for new results from researchers who might provide any glimmer of hope or proof that the substance was the real deal. Investors were also taking notice. In Korea, 10 companies just minimally associated with superconductor research saw their stocks absolutely soar in price. And this got so out of hand, in fact, that the Korean stock exchange had to issue warnings to investors not to get drawn into a news cycle driven investment mania. And despite many tempered and sober warnings from scientists and experts in the field that the paper had extremely sloppy and extremely incomplete data, the media coverage on YouTube, cable news, social media became an echo chamber of techno hype and claims of free energy and the dawn of a new superconducting world were everywhere. It took about a month of patient research for the scientific community to come to a pretty definitive consensus on LK99. According to the vast preponderance of evidence from dozens of labs around the world, LK99 is actually, wait for it, a perfect insulator, meaning it doesn't conduct electricity at all. That's the other end of the spectrum. The mystery of the partial levitation effect was actually due to the contamination of the original LK99 sample with copper sulfide. Okay, so LK99 is not the scientific breakthrough we'd all been hoping for. And that's fine. You win some, you lose some, but it's worth asking, why? Why was the world on the edge of its seat expecting a breakthrough that would change everything? We open this piece by claiming that this episode might actually be the sign of something much more significant, a sign of increasingly frequent and increasingly unrealistic techno hype. In the case of LK99, the hype was very short-lived and ultimately it was a very inexpensive lesson, but the boom and bust cycles behind so many of the game-changing technologies of the past 10 to 20 years have been significantly longer and vastly more expensive. We're talking about dozens of multi-billion dollar boondoggles. For example, nuclear fusion. It's been the holy grail of free energy since the Manhattan Project. Despite headlines as recently as December of 2022 that we've achieved massive breakthroughs, the evidence suggests that we are several decades away from even a working prototype. It's even become the running joke, we're always 20 years away from nuclear fusion. We don't even know if it's commercially viable yet. And at least so far, none of our technological boondoggles have lived up to their promises. They've got use cases, we've gotten some products and services out of the deal, but the game-changing hype vastly exceeds their very limited impact in the marketplace. 
So what's going on here? Where did these unrealistic expectations around revolutionary tech even come from? Well, the origin of utopian hype is a rabbit hole in and of itself. And there's a long tradition of both science fiction and science promotion that have sold the public on everything from automation, freeing us from manual labor, to flying cars, to smart houses that sort your clothes and spank your babies, with the goal of reaching a tech singularity that will give us all eternal life in the cloud, free of work and stress. Ignore the fact that AI now makes art and poetry while auto unions struggle to get paid adequately or push for the kinds of tech integration that would make conditions safer. It is true that our increasing access to computational power has transformed our way of life, maybe immeasurably, but what if there's another side to this story? What if I told you that the claims of ever accelerating exponential gains in technology are simply fantasy? We might be living in a time of diminishing returns, according to the Bureau of Economic Research and several researchers, including this guy. Meet Robert Gordon, an economist who came to be known as the prophet of pessimism. In his 2016 seminal work, The Rise and Fall of American Growth, Gordon argues pretty conclusively that we have experienced a much more pronounced surge in impactful innovations before 1940 than after 1940. According to Gordon, millennials and subsequent generations won't see our standard of living double like our parents did. In fact, we should get used to stagnation because the inventions of the future are unlikely to be as revolutionary as those of the special century between 1870 and 1970. Electricity, the internal combustion engine, and indoor plumbing dramatically improved the standard of living in a way that's almost incomprehensible to our generation. No one who hasn't cooked over a wood stove by the light of a kerosene lamp can really appreciate what it all means. So Gordon says, we moved from the speed of the horse and the sail to the Boeing 707, and we haven't gone any faster since. In 1844, the telegraph gave us instantaneous communication. And now, 180 years later, even with the internet, we are still just elaborating on that enormous leap. I can't even get a signal on my phone on the main road in my town. According to The Economist, Tyler Cohen, this trend of diminishing innovation and productivity has been especially evident since 1970. Okay, so given that innovation drives most productivity enhancements, the seven decade trend of decelerating productivity growth suggests we should actually be tempering our expectations around socially and economically revolutionary technological innovations. That's a lot to process, but get this, it's not just productivity growth that's waning. This phenomenon of diminishing returns is also evident in research or R&D productivity. A detailed study by the National Bureau of Economic Research revealed that over the past half century, there's been a significant increase in the number of researchers required to discover new pharmaceuticals, enhance agricultural yields, and advance microprocessors. Here's the bottom line. For every unit of effort or investment we make into new technologies across virtually all sectors, we're seeing diminished returns on knowledge and innovation. So, Despite all of the techno-optimist hype, whether in the form of utopian dreams or doomer scenarios, the evidence seems to suggest that we should seriously temper our expectations for truly transformative tech. So bringing it full circle, LK99 is not the scientific breakthrough we'd all been hoping for, but it will hopefully serve as a lesson to those of us who are science, tech, and business communicators and journalists, to those who speculate on startups, or those who simply enjoy creatively thinking about the future. Even if LK99 turned out to be the real deal, what most science communicators have failed to understand is that there is a world of difference between a material that achieves extraordinary things in a lab and a material that's actually useful and affordable 
on a mass scale. If it can't be manufactured, it's a laboratory curiosity. Sure, it might win a Nobel Prize or something, but it's still only a laboratory curiosity. The journey from lab to the energy grid is a long and arduous one. Now, excitement and scientific literacy are great boosters of progress, but utopian declarations of a new age of technological revolution are not. In the end, they squander time and money and attention from research that might be a lot less sexy in the short term, but is vastly more effective in addressing our real social challenges in the long term. There's no doubt about it. Technological innovation is an immensely powerful and disruptive force inherently, but LK99 should be a wake up call to all of us. If we want to avoid an age of techno hype, we have to temper our big exciting dreams with a bit of boring but healthy realism.